Hi guys, Korean movie recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap the first South Korean film to be distributed by the Walt Disney Company, My Little Brother. The film revolves around the O siblings and their struggles in life. Busy living their own lives has led them to become estranged from one another. The siblings are forced to reunite at their father's funeral and there they find out that their parents had another child. The question here is, who should take care of the child? Let's find out. The story begins with a day in the lives of each of the O siblings. Sung, the eldest brother, works as a bus driver. So, the first daughter, is a news reporter at one of the biggest TV stations. Ju, the youngest daughter, has several different part-time jobs. Occupied with their own business, all three siblings receive a phone call and are notified of their father's sudden death. At the funeral, they display indifferent attitudes and are clearly estranged from one another. Though they just lost their father, no sadness can be found in Sung and Su. The two even want to shorten the funeral process and are not at all bothered by the empty frame that is supposed to hold their deceased father's picture. The next day, the siblings and Sung's wife find a weeping little boy who is in the middle of installing their father's picture. Ju asks if the boy was Sung's son, and Sung's wife casually answers that their children are twin girls. Midst all confusion, the boy recognizes Su and rushes over to hug her. After checking the official family register certificate, to everyone's surprise, the boy turns out to be the youngest son of the O family named Nak. The family starts arguing about who should take care of Nak. They eventually agree that Nak should be sent to an orphanage. Nak who overhears the conversation feels dejected because no one is willing to take him in. On her way home, Su nearly gets into an accident after getting startled by Nak who secretly climbed into her car. Su tries to contact Sung but to no avail and she is left with no choice but to bring Nak to her place. Upon arriving at Su's apartment, Nak hands her a DVD that Su tosses to the side. That night, Nak dreams of his last memory with his father. Nak and his father, who lived in the countryside, took a bus to Seoul to fulfill Nak's wish of meeting his siblings and taking a family portrait. However, the bus crashed, and his father was killed. Morning comes, and Su continues treating Nak coldly. Before heading to work, she warns Nak to not cross a line she has previously put up as a partition. The scene moves to Ju, who just ruined her audition. Su so calls Ju to ask for Sung and his wife's info but Ju claims that she has none. The two make a deal with Su paying for Ju's card bills in exchange for their brother's info. Ju gets to work immediately, and contacts Sung. She explains to Sung that she will remain tight-lipped as long as Sung gives her money. Their call ends abruptly as Sung spots a man and begins chasing him down. The man has scammed Sung in the past, and it is revealed that Sung repeatedly gets conned because of his good nature and naivety which results in his wife often berating him. On the other hand, Su is frustrated at her chief editor who would not let her expose a dirty politician. She begins to suspect that her superior is also corrupted. Meanwhile, Nak who is not accustomed to sitting still the whole day begins cleaning Su's apartment. Instead of thanking Nak, Su expresses annoyance and tells Nak to not touch her things. Then, Sung enters the scene and tells her that he is willing to take care of Nak. So Nak leaves with Sung. Unbeknownst to Su, Sung has no intention of raising Nak. The man who scammed Sung has previously told him that Sung can exploit the whole situation and receive compensation. Sung plans to bring Nak to a hospital to see a physician and have Nak act like he is mentally unstable after the bus incident. The physician sees through their plan due to Nak and Sung's terrible acting. After the plan falls through, Sung and Nak go to a public bathhouse. There, Nak showcases his unique ability in reading astrology. He says that Sung has gone through many troubles and that only happiness lies ahead in his life. Sung feels touched by Nak's kindness and guilt washes over him. Sung later brings Nak back to Su's apartment. The following day, Nak tags along to Su's office. Su so strictly tells him to stay at the office's library and if she catches him leaving the library, she will send him off to an orphanage. However, Nak does not heed his sister's warning and walks around the building. He meets a child actress named Bile, the daughter of the president of the TV station where Su works. The two wander around and somehow end up at Bile's father, the president's office. Hiding under the table, Nak overhears the president talking to a politician over the phone. 
when Nak manages to sneak out of the room, Sir catches him red-handed. Nak tells Sir everything that he has heard. This gives Sir an idea to employ Nak into her scheme of collecting more information on the relationship between the president and the politician. Without further ado, Sue and Nak carry out the mission. They approach the president and his family in hopes to get invited to their house. To ensure the smoothness of their strategy, Sue purchases recording devices and even buys Nak new clothes and toys that Bile likes so the kids can have a playdate together. The night before the action, Nak expresses his longtime wish, which is to have a family portrait, and Sue agrees under the condition that he performs his task without a hitch. Although they are prepared, Sue and Nak come across a technical snag. Nak slips the recording device under the president's study room's door by accident. When Sue tries retrieving it, she has to barge into the room by force as the room is locked. Sue's attempt creates a ruckus and everyone's attention, so Sue pretends to be unconscious whilst hiding the device in her mouth. Nak who is clueless about his sister's ploy dumps a bowl of water at her. Even though the president does not catch on to their ruse, Sue is furious at Nak for ruining her plan. The next day, Sue asks Jude to come and leaves Nak with her since Sue no longer wants anything to do with him. Though Jude is struggling financially, she tries her best to look after Nak. Nak also helps with some of Jude's work. They talk and Nak tells her how he messed up Sue's plan, and Jude tells him how she wanted to give their parents happiness, especially their late mother who was deaf. Here, Nak finds out that Ju is good at sign language. Soon after, Nak asks Ju to help him fix his problem with Sue, but Ju refuses to help. Nak then decides to go by himself and get the recording Sue wants. He leaves without telling his siblings and while all his siblings search for his whereabouts, Nak stealthily hides in the president's car. At some point, the O siblings spot him riding in the president's car, so they tail the car up close. Nak succeeds in recording the president's devious exchange with the politician, but his cover gets blown up when the car suddenly halts, and Nak fell forward. Realizing that his dirty secret might get exposed, the president swiftly locks the car's door and drives away. Sensing that their youngest brother is in trouble, all O siblings go after the president's car. The president keeps driving and finally stops at a rather secluded area. He forcefully pulls Nak out of the car and attempts to snatch the recording device. So comes short after but the president gets the upper hand and manages to wreck the device by stomping on it. As the president tries to hit Sue, Sung who just arrive at the scene immediately strikes a punch at the president. He throws the president to the ground, and before the two get into a brawl, Su stops them. The president smugly tells her that her career as a reporter has come to an end and flees. Su vents out to her siblings and leaves Nak feeling even guiltier. Sir so loses her job, and that evening, all four siblings gather at Sir's house. Without them realizing, Nak's sudden appearance in their lives has brought them back together. Ju finally tells the other two about Nak's birth story, and they discuss sending Nak over to an orphanage due to financial problems. Nak, whom his siblings thought is sleeping, overhears their conversation and cries in silence. The next morning, Sung drives Nak to the orphanage while Sir sits in her living room. She suddenly remembers about the DVD Nak gave to her when he first came to her place. She watches the DVD and finds a video of her mother at the hospital with baby Nak. Sue's mother explains in sign language, apologizes to Sue for being a selfish parent, and further asks her to take care of their baby brother. Sue gets a change of mind, even more, when she discovers her and her siblings' pictures in Nak's smartwatch. There, she also finds a recording file of the manager speaking to the politician in the car. The scene changes to Sir who is on her way to pick up Nak, but Nak has gone missing. Sir notifies Sung and Ju, and they all file a missing person report at the police station. Soon after, someone calls and alerts them about Nak. It turns out that Nak has gone back to their hometown. By the time his siblings find him, he is crying his heart out in front of their parents' grave. Sung, Su, and Ju apologize to Nak for mistreating him. As the siblings make up for lost time, Sue's career takes up a notch after she successfully exposed the dirty business between her manager and the politician. Ju finds a job as a sign language interpreter at a TV station. At the end of the film, the O family fulfills Nak's lifelong wish, taking a family portrait. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel out. Thank you for watching, and see you, next time.